everybody doing a uh, 2019 uh, prediction video for the New York Yankees. Uh, <clears throat> thought it would be fun, uh, mainly for me, so that way a uh, couple years from now I can look back and see how ridiculously wrong I was. Uh, but I thought it would be fun. You know, the Yankees are obviously building to the future. Um, they have a chance at a wild card spot this year, but um, a lot of excitement about the future of the Yankees. So before I get into that, I uh, just wanted to kind of review uh, back the opening day lineup for 2016. Uh, and uh, first off, you had leading off, you had Jacoby Ellsbury. And uh, batting second was Aaron Hicks for some reason. I guess uh, Brett Gardner was hurt. Um, so just to talk about those two guys real quick. Uh, so Jacoby Ellsbury, I think the Yankees are going to do everything they can to trade him, uh, as well as Brett Gardner. Um, the problem with Ellsbury's contract is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so I think the Yankees will have uh, no luck in trading Ellsbury. But I do think the Yankees, that there is some value in Gardner's contract. The best case scenario is that these two guys play well in 2017 and the Yankees uh, are able to trade him. Uh, but I think what's going to end up happening is uh, the Yankees will find a way to trade Brett Gardner, but will have no luck trading Ellsbury and, and that crazy contract. Uh, batting third, obviously, was uh, Alex Rodriguez, who's retired. And uh, the Yankees are paying him, I don't know, like $30 million <laughs> uh, to be a coach this year or whatever he's doing. Um, so they're paying him a lot of money, uh, but he essentially is a retired player. Uh, speaking of retired players, uh, batting fourth last year was Mark Teixeira. I, I, I tried to find the most ridiculous card I could find. Uh, and uh, Teixeira, now that his contract is up, uh, he has retired and obviously will not be part of the 2019 team. Um, Carlos Beltran, uh, as we know, uh, was traded uh, to the Rangers uh, right before the uh, the deadline, and um, obviously, uh, I do not expect to be a Yankee in 2019. Um, Brian McCann batted sixth, and obviously, he's uh, been traded. Um, I'm not sure why the Yankees traded him. I thought he would have been a, a good backup catcher to Gary Sanchez, and they didn't get a lot back. Uh, in fact, they're even they're paying him. In 2000, they're paying part of his contract in 2017. I actually thought it was a um, not a very good trade, <laughs> um, but he's not going to be a, a Yankee. Um, and then batting seventh, uh, we have uh, Chase Headley, and uh, Chase Headley. Um, I don't know. I, I, I he's another guy that I think the Yankees um, this off season have tried everything they can to trade. Uh, Chase Headley, but they've had no luck. Uh, but I do think between now and 2019, the Yankees will find a way uh, to trade away Chase Headley. Uh, batting eighth, Starlin Castro. Now, he has a very interesting situation because uh, Glaber Torres, uh, who is the, the one of the top Yankee prospects, is, is coming up through the minors. Uh, and right now, uh, Glaber Torres is uh, playing second base. And uh, my guess is, again, the Yankees find a way to trade between now and 2019, trade away Starlin Castro. I don't think it would be very difficult. Um, he has a very reasonable contract, and he's a, a very good player. Um, I think the Yankees could actually get something back for, for this guy if they do decide to trade him. But my prediction is that they do trade Starlin Castro, and he is no longer part of the Yankee lineup in 2019. Uh, and then finally, um, Didi Gregorius batted ninth in the 2016 lineup, and I do think the Yankees will keep Didi Gregorius at shortstop, despite the fact that the Yankees have a lot of really good um, prospects at shortstop. I think that Gregorius uh, is signed to a very reasonable contract, and he's just been getting better and better every year. Um, so there's, to me, I, I think it would be a great idea to keep Didi Gregorius. Uh, so with that being said, um, I'm going to go straight to what I think, that not the 2017 lineup, not the 2018 lineup, but the 2019 lineup is, oh, <clears throat> um, a couple other things, uh, I you know, the Yankees just signed this guy, Matt Holliday, uh, I don't uh, picture him being in the lineup uh, in 2019, I think this, you know, him 
uh, Matt Holiday as a designated hitter uh, will last for 2017. At the most, it'll be 2018. Um, all right, so just moving ahead to 2019. But before I get to that, um, 2018, I think the Yankees are going to do everything in their power to stay under uh, the $189 million threshold. So I think it's going to be some lean years for 2017 and 2018 for the Yankees. Um, I think the I say the Yankees get under the leg luxury threshold, uh, $189 million in 2018, and then just go crazy with uh, acquiring players in 2019. Because th the whole thing is in 2018, if they can get under that threshold, it sort of resets. Because right now the Yankees are pl paying an insane amount of money. Um, in in luxury tax, but once they get under it for one year, then it all resets and um, they're in a much better position going forward. So 2018, they get under 189, and then in 2019, that's sort of the reason why I'm doing this video is that uh, 2018 is going to be a lean year, um, and 2019. All right, so leading off, uh, I have uh, Jorge Mateo. Um, and I have him playing center field. Uh, right now, a lot of people know Jorge Mateo as a shortstop. Um, he's gotten some time at second base, and now they're playing him uh, in the outfield. Uh, it just makes sense uh, for a guy like this guy who stole like 90 bases a couple years ago. With his speed, to have somebody like him playing in center field that can cover all kinds of distance, and then having him lead off, uh, would be phenomenal for the Yankees. So, um, and this is a very optimistic lineup. So, I mean, this this assumes that all the Yankee prospects pan out, uh, which is very unlikely. But it's just sort of the funnest lineup that I could come up with. So, Jorge Mateo batting right, uh, playing center field, batting first, uh, batting second. I have Glaber Torres. Um, like I said, at some point. I'm going to say in 2018, uh, Glaber Torres, uh, it, it becomes a, a point where the Yankees cannot keep him in the minors anymore, and so they move him up, uh, bat him second, which would be, a lot of people have compared him to Derek Jeter, which, uh, which is interesting, because he would be a very interesting player to, um, you know, it, it, it would be following the same sort of um, scenario as Jeter, where Jeter batted second for many years. Uh, so I have him batting second, playing second, uh, batting right. Um, and then, uh, probably to, to no surprise, I have the Yankees acquiring uh, Bryce Harper. Um, I have him uh, in right field, um, and batting third, uh, he, it fits in nicely because he's a lefty uh, into the lineup. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you've been following the Yankees lately, like him and Clint Frazier have been going back and forth about who has the best hair <laughs> for whatever reason. He just, and, he, and Brace Harper was a Yankee fan growing up. Um, I just think that it just sets up perfectly um, where Bryce Harper is playing right field for the New York Yankees in 2019, signs a monster contract uh, because the Yankees finally got onto the luxury threshold in, in 2018. The Yankees are looking to spend some money, and they, and they spend a ton of money on this guy, Bryce Harper. Batting cleanup, and if this guy's batting cleanup uh, in 2019, the Yankees are in great shape, uh, especially considering he's a catcher. I have Gary Sanchez uh, batting right at catcher, batting fourth, um, and uh, it, I mean, again, if he's if he's batting cleanup uh, in 2019, the Yankees are in great shape because to have a catcher batting third or fourth in a lineup is a huge asset. So Gary Sanchez batting fourth. Batting fifth uh, is my man uh, Clint Frazier. Uh, I got him in left field. Uh, so you got in left, you have Clint Frazier in center, Jorge Mateo, and in right, uh, Bryce Harper. So a completely different outfield uh, than, than what we have today. And uh, I have Clint Frazier uh, in left, and, and him and Bryce Harper can argue about um, who has the greatest hair. But unfortunately, uh, with the Yankee, <laughs> uh, 
uh, with the Yankees, you have to kind of cut your hair. Uh, you can't have those those long flows like uh, like they like they do today, or like Clint Frazier has today. Uh, batting sixth, um, I have Greg Bird, uh, and he's he would be bat, uh, playing first base. Uh, again, fits in nicely here because I have righty, righty, lefty, righty, righty, Greg Bird, lefty, um, batting, um, I believe batting sixth, right, sixth. And uh, next up is Aaron Judge. Now, Aaron Judge, uh, I, I have him at designated hitter. Um, he actually does play a pretty nice outfield, but he just makes sense as a designated hitter. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, uh, he's still in the lineup, and this is another guy that I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed. If the, if the Yankees still have Aaron Judge um, in their lineup in 2019, they're in great shape. Uh, that means he's panned out. That means he's hitting ho more home runs. Uh, and not striking out an insane amount like he did in 2016. Um, this might be the one guy that I'm worried about the most in terms of whether he'll he'll pan out or not. Who knows if the Yankee if he doesn't pan out, uh, the Yankees might go ahead and sign a, a different DH, um, or maybe they don't uh, you know trade away one of the guys that I talked about before. Um, but right now I have him batting seventh, uh, batting eighth. And uh, playing third base, I have this guy, Miguel Andujar, um, uh, who was fantastic in the Arizona Fall League. And um, we'll see if he, if he keeps it up. Uh, he's a, um, a, a great prospect, uh, one of the top prospects for the Yankees. Uh, and I have him playing third. And then uh, finally, as I pointed out earlier, I, I believe D.D. Gregorius uh, will still be at shortstop. And batting ninth, so that's the lineup that I have. Um, like I said, I think it just makes sense. Uh, you have righty, righty, lefty, righty, righty. Whoops. Lefty, <laughs> righty, righty, lefty. Um, and uh, part of the reason, again, why I, I wouldn't sign, uh, why, why I don't think the Yankees will sign Manny Machado, it's uh, because they'll have Miguel Andujar coming up, and um, it, it, he's another righty, and the Yankees can't afford to have another righty in their lineup, which may sound crazy. That's the reason why you don't sign somebody. Um, in terms of the pitching staff, um, oh, I have the Yankees signing... Dallas Keuchel. Now, uh, the Yankees are sort of known for going after pitchers that uh, kill them in the playoffs. And Dallas Keuchel, uh, there was a one-game playoff uh, where he pitched for the Astros and just shut the Yankees down. And I, I think the Yankees will remember that. And uh, I say the Yankees sign him when he becomes a free agent in uh, the 2019 season. Now, the Yankees... Um, Next year, uh, the Yankees may have to re-sign uh, Masahiro Tanaka. Um, he has an option in his contract, uh, which he's uh, definitely going to opt out of. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, CC will retire. Uh, Pineda, the Yankees will not re-sign. But I think Tanaka in 2018, they will re-sign Masahiro Tanaka, and he will be their number two starter. Um at number three, I have this guy, Shohai Otani, who is considered to be the Babe Ruth of Japan. And um, in, you know, Yankee fashion, the Yankees have always been all, um, all over uh, these Japanese uh, players that have come over to the America, to, to, to the Americas. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and I don't think this will be any different. I, I think the Yankees will try to sign o Otani uh, if he does get posted. Um, and I think that maybe, along with Tanaka in 2018, maybe the only other big splash the Yankees do. The Yankees do two signings in 2018, Tanaka and Otani. Besides that, um, it's a very quiet offseason, but signing Otani would be huge, uh, which would make them still relevant in 2018. <clears throat> My number four guy uh, is a guy that the Yankees traded for uh, as a prospect in the Yankee si system, uh, Justice Sheffield. And uh, finally, rounding it out, uh, James Caprielian, 
uh, will be the number five starter for the Yankees. Um, in the bullpen, uh, and this would be, uh, and this is ridiculously optimistic, um, I have Chance Adams, uh, who's a prospect today, uh, Adam Warren, uh, Luis Severino, I think the Yankees are going to try to get him to be a starter this year, and it's not going to pan out. I think he, he makes sense in the bullpen, and to have some guy, a guy like Luis Severino in the bullpen where he can dominate would be huge. Something like a, almost like a, a Dellen Batances, like, like his career, uh, has been so far. They tried him out as a starter, but he's just been, um, really successful in the bullpen. Uh, I say the Yankees re-sign this guy, Justin Wilson, who's been, um, uh, was fantastic with the Yankees, but for some reason they traded him. Um, I, I just say for some reason the Yankees find a way to get him back. Um, Yankees uh, re-sign Andrew Miller when he becomes a free agent. Uh, the Yankees uh, obviously will still have Dallin Batances, and um, they will have Araldis Chapman uh, signed through the 2019 season, and he will be the closer. And then finally, uh, the bench. <laughs> I think the Yankees will still have uh, Jacoby Ellsbury at on their bench, like I said, I don't think they'll find a way to trade him. Uh, he's a five-tool player <laughs> playing the bench. Uh, you have um, Austin Romine, who will be the backup catcher. Uh, Tyler Austin, who will be uh, the uh, the backup sort of like first baseman slash DH. And then your super utility guy of uh, Rob Refsnyder. And uh, also, by the way, I think that uh, Girardi will continue to be the manager of the team. Uh, so that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully in you enjoyed your video. Like, like I said, this was more for me than anything else. Uh, you know, this is my uh, prediction video for 2019. And in two years from now, uh, I'll get to see how ridiculously incorrect I was about everything. But uh, these videos are always fun. So thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later.